This is part two of the module eight videos for Statway. In the first video, we looked at confidence intervals. That's where we're trying to get an estimate of the true population proportion using the sample proportion. Hypothesis testing is a little bit different. We're not really trying to get an estimate of the population proportion. We're trying to make a claim about the population proportion. Now, in a hypothesis test, you have two sets of hypotheses. First, you have the null hypothesis, and you have the alternative. Now, there, these are not all three written simultaneously. The first one, the alternative hypothesis is always the claim we're making about the population proportion. It's the claim we're trying to prove. So we could say that the population proportion is less than a certain number, or the population proportion is bigger than a certain number, or the population proportion is not equal to a certain number. The first one, this is called a left tail test with the left than, less than. This is called the right tail test with the greater than, and not equal to, that's called a two tail test. So the alternative hypothesis always states the claim we're trying to prove. The null hypothesis is always the alternative hypothesis, but with an equal sign. This is how it works. We want to try to prove the alternative hypothesis is true. That's the claim we're making. So we do the opposite. We don't assume the alternative hypothesis is true. We assume the null hypothesis is true. We collect sample data. We compute the probability of getting that sample proportion that we just got, or worse, if we assume the null hypothesis is true. This is what this really strange thing called the p-value is. The p-value is a probability. It's the probability of us getting the p-hat that we got, or worse, if the null hypothesis is really true. Now, if the p-value is low, then it means that it is unlikely that we would have gotten that p hat that we just got if the null hypothesis is really true. So if it's, wait, if it's unlikely we would have gotten that p hat value, then our assumption was wrong. The null hypothesis couldn't have been true. So therefore, the opposite is true. We reject the null and instead accept the um, alternative hypothesis, which again is the claim we're trying to prove. If the p-value is high, we can't unfortunately form any conclusions. We can't accept or reject any of the hypotheses. So there's a saying, and maybe, maybe this will help you as far as memorizing the p-value and what we accept or reject. If the p-value is low, the null hypothesis has got to go. If the p-value is high, we must be shy. So again, what this means is if the p-value is low, the null hypothesis has got to go. We reject the null and accept the alternative. If the p-value is high, we must be shy. We don't accept or reject anything. We don't come to any conclusions. Okay, let's look at an example here. People's views on bottled water have changed drastically over the past two decades. Interestingly, different age groups have varying opinions on bottled water. Suppose a friend says he did a survey. He estimates 70% of teenagers prefer bottled water to tap. That estimate seems a bit low to you. You decide to gather some of your own data to test his claim. Okay. So wait. We think the 70% is too low. So our alternative hypothesis is the claim we're making. If we think that 70%, which is 0.7, is too low, then our claim is the p-value, the p population proportion, is bigger than 0.70 because 70% 70 is too low. Null hypothesis, p is always equal to that number. So we randomly sample 50 teenagers and find 45 prefer bottled water. Let's run the hypothesis test. Now, we always assume the null hypothesis is true. 
So we assume that P does equal 0.7. The check for normality, N, P. N is 50 from right here. P, 0.70 from the null hypothesis. That's 35, bigger than or equal to 10. And N1 minus P, bigger than or equal to 10. Next, we're going to need the estimated the stand. We're going to need the standard error, not the estimated, the true standard error. Now, we do have the p, the value of p, which is the population proportion. Why do we have it? Because we're assuming the null hypothesis is true. So that saying p is 0.7, you come up with a standard error of 0.065. Now, the z value is always p hat minus p over standard deviation. p hat is 0.90. Okay, again, 0.90. We have 45 over 50. That is the p hat. So that's 0.90 minus p, 0.70 from the null hypothesis. And 0 0.065 is the standard error. So the z value is 3.077. Now, let's go back to the alternative hypothesis. Greater than, this is a right tail test. That means we're going to get the area on the right side of the curve. So here, here's our test statistic. And what is the Z value? 3.077. So greater than was the alternative. We want the area to the right. So the P value is normal CDF, 3.077, comma 199. 0.001. Okay, now at the level of significance here, okay, we are testing this at a 0.05 level of significance. The p value is low. That is what they mean by statistically significant, a low p value. Okay, now the p value is low. We reject the null. We do accept the alternative. So at the 5% level of significance, there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the population proportion of teenagers who prefer bottled water to tap is greater than 70%. We accept the alternative. Okay, let's look at another example. This time we're going to use a two-tailed test. Circle is an organization that does research on young U.S. citizens' political and civic involvement. After the 2008 election, Circle surveyed young people ages 18 to 29 who had voted in the election. Circle found 68% of the young people voted for Barack Obama. Now, much has changed between 2008 and the presidential election that was held in 2012. Before the 2012 election, statisticians and political pundits who study elections began to wonder whether youth support for Obama had changed. Now, we're not saying bigger or less than that original 68, but different than. Okay, so suppose a poll of a random sample of 60 young people before the 2012 election found 35 said they supported Barack Obama. Conduct a hypothesis test at the 5% level of significance to determine whether the percent of young people who supported Obama changed between 2008 and 2012. So, the alternative hypothesis, we want to know if it's changed from 68%, which is 0.68. So that's not less than, that's not greater than. This is a two-tailed test, not equal to. And of course, the null hypothesis is always equality. Let's check for normality. N is 60, P is always gotten from the null hypothesis. Remember, we assume the null hypothesis is true. So N times P, bigger than or equal to 10. N times 1 minus P, bigger than or equal to 10. So normality is satisfied. P hat, 35 out of 60, um, would vote for Obama. So that's 58.3%. Next, the standard error. Now again, we know the P value. Don't use the P hat here. We know the P value from the null hypothesis. So the standard error is 0.06. The Z is P hat minus P over standard error, minus 
Now, a two-tailed test means that we have to get the probability both on the left side of the curve and the right side. Now, notice we got a test statistic, a z-value, that's negative. So right here, we're going to get this area right here on the left-hand side because the test statistic is negative. And the area on the right-hand side is exactly the same due to symmetry. So you don't have to get the area twice, just double it. So the p-value is double the normal CDF from minus 199 to minus 1.62, 0.106. Now, the p-value here is high compared to the alpha. So, here, the p-value is high. We must be shy. We don't reject or accept any hypothesis. Therefore, we do not have enough evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Finally, if we run a hypothesis test, an error probably does not occur, but sometimes an error will occur. Maybe we just get a bad bunch of sample data. That's very possible. So, a type 1 error. Now, when the p-value is low, we reject the null and accept the alternative. But suppose we just had some bad data that made us come to that conclusion. That would be a type 1 error. Now, guys, we're not going to know if an error occurred or not. Okay, we're going to form our conclusion. But at a 90, at a 5% level of significance, you could assume about 5% of the time there's going to be an error in the conclusion that we form. So again, if the p-value is low, that means we rejected the null, but we shouldn't have rejected the null. Okay, the null is really true. Now, a type 2 error occurs when the p-value is high. Again, if the p-value is high, that means we must be shy. We don't accept or reject anything. But sometimes an error will be made in our conclusion. We're not going to know when an error occurs. But theoretically, if an error occurred, when the p-value is high, it's a type 2 error. We didn't reject the null, but we should have rejected the null. We should have accepted the alternative.